Attribute number six, Magnificence, part three. Meditation number 24, Adorned with the Creation. Psalm 8, 1. O Yahweh, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth! You have set your splendor above the heavens. What is wonderful about this attribute? When God displayed his wonders in the creation, he not only made the sizes, distances, heat, speeds, energy, beauty, and complexity all incomprehensible, but he made them incomprehensible by orders of magnitude. The distance to and size of the sun are already unfathomable to the human mind. We are so puny and our brains so limited that we cannot relate to such immensity. We can say true things about them mathematically, but the numbers are beyond experiential meaning to us. So all God had to do to create unimaginable, unfathomable grandeur would have been to create our solar system. But he didn't stop there. Imagine some pagan god who is the supreme god of the pagans, so massive and great that he can hold the entire world in his hand so that to him the earth were the size of a grapefruit. Such an unimaginably massive God could fathom the 50-foot diameter sun, and even the 40-mile trip out to Pluto. But even if there were such a God, and even if his mind were as much superior to ours as his size, still, he would not even begin to be able to fathom the size of the Milky Way, which even on that scale, would be four billion miles across. And if that massive god worshipped a much greater god, a god of such unfathomable size that he could hold the entire solar system in his hand like a grapefruit, maybe he could understand the size of the Milky Way, which to him would be like 12,000 miles. But even that massive to the second power god could not begin to conceive of the distance to the nearest cluster of galaxies, which, if our solar system were the size of a grapefruit, would be seven million miles away. Or the farthest object we can see from Earth, which would be another 14 billion miles beyond that. And what is the relation of the 24 billion light-year span of what we can see to the actual universe? One would think all that would be enough splendor to satisfy our appetite for awe, but it is not. Our God-given need to be staggered and floored by that which is awesome is so immense that even the universe itself only partially satisfies it. Something deep within us craves even greater magnificence than that of the heavens, so God has set his splendor above the heavens. The most massive galaxies and farthest expanses of the universe are less than a speck of dust in God's great hand. Psalm 113, 5 and 6. Who is like the Lord our God, the one who sits enthroned on high, who stoops down to look on the heavens and the earth? Magnificent Creator, you have set your splendor above the heavens. Your glory is vastly superior to the most glorious reality we can see, the very heavens. You are higher than the highest heaven. We get lost thinking about billions of light years and the vastness of space and the incredible thought that Wherever the end is, what about just beyond that? Whatever is long past that still falls infinitely short of your expansiveness. The most glorious of sunsets is a blank screen compared to the tiniest fragment of your glory. Oh, the folly of those who worship the creation. Lord, my heart breaks for them. They have to worship something that is not enough, something that does not have all satisfying glory. Poor wretches! Their highest reality is not high enough. 
O Lord, open their eyes. Open the eyes of thousands to see the inadequacy of all their false gods, that they may turn to and embrace and exult in your superior, sufficient glory. Especially let that happen in my heart, Lord. My heart is still so drawn to the inadequate, leaky cisterns of this world. Let all inadequacies serve to turn my eyes upon you. Job 40, 9-11 Do you have an arm like God's? And can your voice thunder like His? Then adorn yourself with glory and splendor and clothe yourself in honor and majesty. Unleash the fury of your wrath. Look at every proud man and bring him low. Psalm 104, 1 Bless the Lord, O my soul. O Lord, my God, you are very great. You are clothed with splendor and majesty. This glorious creation and all God's mighty, wonderful works are like garments for him. Clothes demonstrate and accentuate the glory of a man. God's splendor, as reflected in his creation, the focus of Psalm 104, is given to show his magnificence. The psalmist did not say, Bless the creation, O my soul. A tuxedo on a hanger is impressive to no one. All the greatness of this creation is nothing but fabric on a hanger, unless it is seen as adorning the Lord. And the beauty of the one dressed up is an attribute of the dressed one, not the dress. Oh, the folly of the one who stares at the cloth and his wonder and marvel terminates on the fabric. What effect would it have on your heart if you were to consciously experience God's adorning splendor today? Experiencing this attribute, contemplate the wonders of the creation and think of how they adorn the Lord. Father, open my eyes to see not your adornment, but you, and not just you, but you adorned. Teach me to look at your creation the right way. What incredible blindness is required for people to see the works of your hands and not understand that this world is the work of a king. These are the solemn strokes of your profound mind the awesome touches of your staggering attributes, the broad lines of your inscrutable mystery, the deep shadings of overwhelming power, a problem never to be solved or traced out except by admitting that the one who laid it all out is above all and gives no accounting for what he does but rules everything according to his pleasure and will. Think, which of the wonders of the creation tend to be most amazing to you? Make much of the glimmers of awe you feel when you see those things, and let that train your soul for true awe. Promise to trust today. Isaiah 66, 18 I am about to come and gather all nations and tongues 
and they will come and see my glory.